Hello, welcome back. In today's video, we'll be finding out how to work absolute um, what, linear inequalities. And this will lead us to finding how to work linear programming. So without wasting my time, let's find out how we do this. Okay, so absolute uh, linear inequality. Assuming you have been given an absolute value of x greater than 5, find a solution set. How do you do that? Hope you could remember that when we say absolute x, it comes in two forms. x, if we have what? A positive value of what x by negative x if we have a negative value for what x so with this in mind we can work this absolute inequality so this simply means we have x is greater than 5 or negative x that is if x has a negative value negative x greater than what 5 and for this, we can say we've reached an uh, end point. So x is either greater than 5, or we can divide the both sides by what? The coefficients of x, which is negative 1. So when we divide by negative 1, x becomes less than 5 with the negative sign, because we divide through by negative 1, so x becomes less than negative 5. So our solution becomes x greater than 5 or x less than negative 5. And to write this in the interval form, we are going to write it this way. x is what? Greater than 5. So we have 5 and positive infinity. Or so union here we have okay it's an inequality sign so we have open intervals also we have negative infinity and what negative five so this is our solution and this is our solution in terms of what interval forms so this is just a basic absolute function so let's take another absolute function which is a little bit complex than this and find out how to work it using the same idea that we've obtained here. So we have absolute function of x plus 1 less greater than 5. So we take both sides. So if x plus 1 is positive, then it's greater than 5. Or if x plus 1 is negative, then we have to negate the entire value to make it positive. So negative x plus 1 in the bracket also greater than 5. So we can simplify the first side of the solution, giving us x is greater than 4. This one goes there to subtract or we have we divide through by negative 1, so that we get x plus 1 less than negative 5. So we have x greater than 4 here, or we have x less than negative 6. The one goes there to subtract and we have a negative 6. So now our solution set is x greater than 4 or x what less than minus 6. And we want to represent this on a number line. We have our number line, we have 4 and negative 6, we have negative 6 here, we have 4 here, 0 somewhere here. So we can draw our solution set this way, x less than negative 6 and also x greater than 4. Here we are introducing how to write this on the number line. So this is just a form of solution. So this is how we actually work inequalities with what absolute functions in them.
Okay, now what about when we have only inequality signs without absolute functions? For example, 3x plus 4y greater than 24. We want to find the solution set to this inequality expression here. The first thing we can do is to write an equation out of the inequality. So the equation we can get is 3x plus 4y equals 24. And since we are using linear programming, linear means something in the form of what a line. So we write the equation form of the inequality that means we are transforming it into a line form. So we then sketch the graph for this line. But before that, let's find our intercepts when x is equal to zero. It implies what? That's finding the intercept on the y-axis. When x is 0, that we replace 0 here and we simplify, we're getting y equal to 6. So that our point becomes 0, 6. Also, when y is equal to 0, finding the intercept on x axis, x is also equal to 8, given that the point. 8, 0. So with these two points, we can plot the graph of this equation. So we have our edges here, 0, 6, and 8, 0. So assuming we have our 8 here, we have our 6 here. So we can sketch our line here. So that is this line we've sketched here is actually for this equation, but we're giving an inequality sign. So what we have to do is check this inequality expression here with the line. Now we want to see which part of the line will satisfy this equation. Is it either the upper part of the line or the lower part? So we pick any point to check, and it's always easier to pick 0, 0. That's the origin. You can see that the origin which is 0, 0 is below the line. So when we pick 0, 0 and we satisfy the inequality, that means all the region below the line will satisfy the equation. But if not, then we choose the alternative, that is the upper side. So we pick 0 and 0. Let's pick 0 and 0 in this inequality function that was given. When x is 0 here, y is 0. So we place 0 and 0 here. So 3 by 0 is 0, 4 by 0 is also 0. 0 plus 0, is it greater than 24? No. So meaning this part of the graph wouldn't satisfy the equation, but all the above will satisfy the equation. Now, we shade the region that satisfies the equation that way. You can realize that the shading is not touching the line. This is because we have greater than, it shouldn't be equal to 24. So when it touches the line, that means it's actually greater than or equal to. Since there is no equal to sign at the greater than, the lines of shading do not touch what uh, sketch line of the equation. So this is just another way to work for inequalities when we are trying to find the values that will satisfy the inequality relation given. So, we'll be ending the video here. The next video that we'll be having, we'll work some more examples on linear inequalities. When we have systems of linear inequalities, how do we solve them? Using the same approach, you'll we'll see other ways of solving it. Till we meet again, hope you'll be sketching graphs, calculating for values and using all the methods we've talked about.